maybe even pair song strategies. It can really come up to some shenanigans, but it is time to get underway with Swiss round number six between Colin and Joshua. And for Colin, it is going to be the Coridon and the Whimsicott. And for Joshua, the Annihilate and the Raging Bolt. We weren't really sure that the Annihilate would come to this matchup. It felt like Annihilate might not have had a place in this matchup, but it is something you can at least safely lead and try to trade away, whether that's just Final Gambit directly trading it or trying to get a close combat into Crydon and kind of force attention in that direction. Of course, it doesn't like to see Whimsicott on the other side. Whimsicott can Tailwind and overspeed the Tailwind that the, the Choice Scarf that Annihilate has um, and can also just try to Moonblast the Annihilate itself without taking too much damage back into Whimsicott. I don't think much surprise to see Raging Bolt led here. I think any lead that didn't have Raging Bolt would feel like a lead of Chiyu on the other side would have been very ex difficult to deal with and it would have been too expensive to try to switch Raging Bolt in. But of course, with no Chiyu on the other side, you have to be very careful about allowing too much damage into Raging Bolt. If Raging Bolt takes something like a Moonblast and Collision Course double up, well, there may be nothing left that can comfortably take a heat wave in the sun. Well, the Annihilate isn't going to stick around, so in its stead, the Qian Pao from Joshua now going to hit the field. A little bit difficult to think about that switch, knowing that that sort of ruin, uh, sort of ruin is going to affect your Raging Bolt partner. But this Coridon did protect this turn, so at the very least, you're going to be safe from any of those physical attacks, doing more damage into that Raging Bolt. But the Raging Bolt wanted to go for the Draco Meteor, Colin, keeping that Coridon safe with that Protect. Coridon protecting itself, possibly from damage coming out from Annihilate, especially if you know you want to Moonblast on the turn and not Tailwind, then that Choice Scarf is a little more threatening. And so Coridon just stays safe, no risk to it from a Draco Meteor coming out. I think you're right that with Sword of Ruin coming in, the, the double up, the Collision Course, and Moonblast probably was enough to just KO the Raging Bolt, but both players, uh, well, I guess Joshua taking a little bit of risk there, Colin playing a little bit safe, more safely, doesn't take a K uh, KO on that turn, but I think still finds himself in a pretty good position. Chien Pao can threaten a bunch of damage back into either of these Pokemon, but a Fire Trastalization reduces a lot of the possible damage output from Joshua, and then if you co combine that with a Tailwind, uh, then the damage can start swinging very heavily from Colin's side. Well, that Tailwind comes through. So now this Coridon will be one of the fastest Pokemon in the field. But we see the Raging Bolt go for the Thunderclap, which is going to help whittle this Coridon down as the Flare Blitz in the sun is follow up into the Raging Bolt is not enough to be able to knock it out for this turn, which is going to leave it vulnerable to a Thunderclap in the next one. But the Ice Spinner into this Coridon that did not Terrastalize to the Fire type will be enough to be able to pick it up. Such uh, an interesting decision to not Terrastalize there. Colin is fully aware when making that decision that it means less damage coming out from Flare Blitz, enough less damage that that Flare Blitz does not pick up a KO or Raging Bolt, and that he's opening up for Ice Spinner to deal a ton of damage back. But, but choosing to save that Terrastalization for later uh, and making a trade there, maybe not expecting the Crydon to actually go down, but the double target means it does and doesn't really manage to capitalize on it that much. But of course, we talked before the match that Raging Bolt was one of the best things to stop you if it is the last thing in that spot. Spot, um, and now it is so low on the other side. And what a great way to invest this terrestrialization now, even though you didn't have it for that Coridon. This Raging Bolt does get the electric terror type and has access to spread damage in that electro web. Whether you want it to be speed control or not, it will be plenty to be able to pick up this Raging Bolt. And you're also going to terrestrialize away from the weaknesses to the Qian Pao as well as this Raging Bolt. Even going for the Thunderclap though into the Whimsicott, gonna sense that that Moonblast is coming, but it's going into the Protect of the Qian Pao. So Joshua getting a nice call there. But the Raging Bolt going for the Electro Web, it does leave this Raging Bolt on Joshua's side really vulnerable. And with this Terra on top, that should be plenty of damage to pick it off. But as I say that, I'm wrong. That Assault Vest is coming in clutch. Assault Vest of four times resistance and Electro Web's really low base power it means that even at the extremely low health that Raging Bolt was at, Electro Web is not able to pick up the KO. Uh, Colin looking to pick up a KO himself on Xi'an Pao that turn goes for the Electro Web uh, plus Moonblast double up if it doesn't get it. Uh, of course, Raging Bolt probably still can't accomplish much. It now has speed dropped. Uh, it could easily just go down to another Electro Web. The Thunderclap will do a chunk of damage in either of these Pokemon, but not like a critical amount. And so the double up is probably still there into Qian Pao. And if you can get it on this turn, KOing two Pokemon, that might've even be better than the previous turn. But no, for now, Wizard just going to protect itself. I'm still speechless. The Chien Pao was trying to go for the Sucker Punch, though, and it's not going to be able to hit its mark into the Whimsicott, but the Raging Bolt, likewise, going to go for the Thunderclap, uh, and it's not going to work either into the Whimsicott. So we see the Electro Web coming into play, and that double up would have definitely been enough. And this time, the Electro Web into the Raging Bolt is going to pick it off. <laughs> Two times the charm. 
A smart little play from Joshua there tries to... The Electro Web wasn't going to be enough damage to pick up the KO into Whimsicott, but if Whimsicott had gone for the Moon Blast and an Electro Web plus a Sucker Punch would have been enough damage to pick up the KO. But because Whimsicott just protects itself on that turn, it doesn't capitalize at all. And so it leaves the same field position for Zacian to walk out into. Zacian uh, can deal a bunch of damage in this position, can probably, oh, can certainly KO Whimsicott, can probably two hit KO Raging Bolt from this position. Um, but shouldn't be able to one-hit KO when it's Raging Ball from this position. A combination of Sucker Punch might at, like start to amount to enough damage. I think a little bit difficult of a position for Colin. You can't be too trusting that just leaving weight Raging Bolt on the field, you'll get an Electro Web off, especially if, if the uh, Stellar Trastalization is used to amplify the damage from Zacian. Um, and I think if Zacian can kind of come through this turn a little bit unscathed and Raging Bolt goes down, things start to swing pretty heavily back in Joshua's favor. That try on trade from far earlier doesn't look nearly as good. No, and I mean, here too, trying to go for the double protect, just in case there was a super effective attack from the Zacian coming through, uh, it will be able to hit its mark now that the Whimsicott has failed that. And the Selector Web will not be able to pick off this Chien Pao as this Raging Bolt might have intended. It does do a sizable amount of damage into Zacian as the speed is going to drop as well. But this Behemoth Blade, boy, has it been a long time since we've seen this animation. <laughs> but it's not into a Dynamax target. It feels so different. <laughs> Whimsicott goes down there. I don't think Colin's too sad to give that up. It's, I think, a better loss for him than a bunch of health onto Raging Bolt. You can also see the Tailwind was able to make Raging Bolt faster than the Zacian there, so that it got an Electro Web off. Definitely now, with one state of, stage of speed dropped on the Zacian, it will still be faster. And now is the moment. We talked before the match that Chiyu might be the most pivotal Pokemon, and it's on the field at this point. The, the Electro Web and Heat Wave double up. Uh, will easily KO both of these Pokemon. She and Pao can try to get a Sucker Punch off uh, ahead of that, but is not going to pick up the KO onto either of these Pokemon with that. Of course, accuracy can still be a big factor here. Neither of those moves, Heat Wave or Electro Web, is 100% accurate. Um, but I think it's a tricky position, because if Joshua just attacks into this and does lose two Pokemon to a double spread move, well, Annihilate, but a choice card for single target in the back is not going to close out that game. If you can manage to lose only one of them, then Annihilate can have a much bigger impact. Okay, well, Terrasalization is going to get committed here. It's going to at least boost up one of these Dark-type attacks from this Chien Pao. And uh, with the Sucker Punch now heading into this Raging Bolt's way, I mean, that is 50%. If you can get the follow-up here, that's huge. But the Thunderclap going into the Chien Pao, even though the Chien Pao is faster, means it's not going to be able to hit. But it doesn't matter when the Chiyu is able to land both targets with this Heat Wave to pick up a double KO. And it does come down to just this Annihilate in the back. Colin looking for a little extra on top there. If the Chien Pao had not used a priority move, then Thunderclap could have just picked it up and prevented any damage from coming out on the other side. But of course, doesn't get that. Instead, just a heat wave for two KOs. Uh, and that leaves Annihilate on an island by itself. Annihilate uh, could do this with a couple of turns, but it's going to be, uh, you know, a combination of uh, probably two Raging Bolt attacks that it has to take. And the first one is going to be this Thunderclap. We'll have to see how much damage it does. Yeah, I mean, that's enough <laughs> that's definitely enough especially when this annihilate goes for the close combat doesn't get the knockout either and lowers its special defense in the process you're hoping that this chiyu is going to miss a heat wave when it comes down to that but it does not and so just like our chiyu before opposite like we saw in the previous game that feel like they should work uh, and it's going to be a different lead for calling this time instead it's the whims and the, the uh flutter main against the chin pow and the gothitelle making his first appearance on joshua's side Wow, okay, well, for Colin, that's great news. You have your ghost-type Pokemon in front of this Gothitelle, but the Gothitelle has access to so many other tools that we can really take advantage of next to this Chien Pao. Gothitelle definitely can try to fake out Whimsicott. I think it, its fake-out presence could be one of the more impactful things for Joshua. If it can end up uh, against the Chiyu at some point, that fake-out can be really disruptive. But here, of course, you can't fake-out Fluttermane. Whimsicott is threatening a, a ghost trastalization. You don't expect Colin would actually use it in the situation, but you have to at least consider, oh, well, I can't give up too much if that were to be the selection. But it also looks pretty vulnerable and doesn't kind of provide any damage assistance for Chien Pao to try to save it from just taking something like a Moon Boss plus Dazzling Gleam double up. Well, the Whimsicott's just gonna go for the Trastalization, so Ghost Terra, one way that you can get around the fake out is just make yourself a ghost type also. It also gives you the flexibility to be able to switch out if you want to in the face of this Shadow Tag got the tell, but you're just gonna go ahead and get the Dazzling Gleam damage to bring down this Chien Pao to its Focus Sash. The Ice Spinner, 
Uh, not going to be able to uh, hit into the Whimsicott, and it wouldn't be super effective anyway now thanks to the Ghost Typing, but Firebeat is not the bulkiest of Pokemon, so it is going to go down to just that Ice Spinner, but the follow-up from this Whimsicott picked up such a big threat from Joshua. Colin recognizing that getting Chin Power down was probably the most important thing that could happen out of that turn, and so is willing to spin the Ghost Jack Crystallization to try to catch a fake out. But I think there's a lot of little things in that turn that probably don't go the way that he expected them to. Uh, the Whimsic the Gothic Hill does not fail a fake out into Whimsicott, instead it taunts this Whimsicott, uh, turns off most of the supporting options that Whimsicott would like to use, and Fluttermane just goes down to an Ice Spinner there. A lot of times players are being forced to use Icicle Crash because they need the extra bit of base power to make sure they can land that one hit KO into Fluttermane. In this case, the Chin Pao able to just do it with an Ice Spinner. That's either a, uh, a more frail Fluttermane than we're used to, maybe uh, a Chin Pao without a speed boosting nature, but an attack boosting anyone's nature instead, some combination of it, but it's a really impactful change to this game, because if Fluttermane had stayed on the field for an extra turn, that trade looks a lot better, I think, for Colin. Instead, it's, it's pretty neutral, and the Trastalization was spent for Colin. Of course, that does just open things up for Chiyu to come out on the field and, and start having an impact that it, it's capable of in this matchup, but it's also the perfect moment for Raging Bolt to come back on the field. The best answer for Chiyu, and this time, not whittled down. No other source of damage into it means that it comes in at full health. Still has to watch out for Whimsicott Moonblast. The damage can mount really quickly, especially with uh, Dark Pulse as an option from Chiyu on the other side, but for the moment, looks pretty healthy. And it's tough because I was going to say that this Raging Bolt has yet to have been uh, forced into a terrestrialization, but even not having the terrestrialization for the Chi Yu, you would have loved for, if you're Colin to have the ground typing with the Terra Blast, but you force the terrestrialization in a different way, knowing that the Whimsicott is stuck, having to Moon Blast into this Raging Bolt. And with the double up of the Overheat and this Moon Blast into the Raging Bolt, you've already whittled it down to well within another Moon Blast's range. Foul play into the Whimsicott is going to do a good chunk now that it is a ghost terror type, but the Whimsicott's still around to be able to go with another Moonblast. This is a very de delicate position for Colin, though. I if, you know, y you could be really tempted to just switch Chiyu out here, go for another Moonblast to pick up the KO and Raging Bolt, undo the overheat drops, but it can so easily be disrupted for, say, a Thunderclap into Whimsicott. It's been taunted, it can't do anything but attack, and with a Ghost Trastalization, it's now neutral to Thunderclap. And if you just pick off Whimsicott while there's a switch, then maybe things don't look as good for Colin. I think if I'm in Colin's shoes, I'm very tempted to just allow that to happen because you really do need to reset the boost on Shiyu, and you're probably not that worried about what Gothitelle does in the other spot. Uh, but definitely a tricky position. It's gonna be hard for, for Colin to both have the position he would like to have and keep all these Pokemon healthy. Ooh, okay, well, that's an interesting call. You see the Whimsicott leave the field for the Coridon, and the double up into that slot looks even better if you're Joshua. You've got the Orichalcum Pulse, though, to at least set the sun. It's gonna help with um, this Chiyu here to at least get some more powerful overheats. And so now that it is still one of the fastest things on the field, is able to take out this Raging Bolt before it's able to do what it had locked into, which would have been great if it hit the target that it actually wanted. God, that Draco Meteor would have been so clutch. Would have been a lot of damage, but Chiyu elects to stay on the field, go to minus four special attack, and pick up that KO. Uh, it, of course, can always switch out in the future. Very easy to just switch Chiyu into Whimsicott and undo those drops, or to just stay out on the out offense. I think even at minus four special attack, Sun Boosted Overheat is going to do a lot to Zacian. It's not so assumed that Chiyu would just switch out here. And of course, Coridon, uh, no terrestrialization used from Colin's side can also become a fire type, resist Zacian's offense, and uh, threaten a ton of damage. Well, this Coridon is just going to protect here. It does not need to, to worry about taking an attack this turn, especially when Play Rough is on the menu. The Zacian is going to be able to take out the Chiyu with that move. The Whimsicott comes in, but I think you still have to worry a little bit about whether or not you're able to just close out the game here if you're Joshua. Like, is this Zacian going to actually be enough, knowing that Colin has the opportunity here to have released the taunt from this Whimsicott and go for something like the Tailwind? Absolutely. I think... The play here, the ex expectation, is Tailwind plus Flare Blitz to pick up a KO into Zacian. And Gothitel can't really do much to punish that. It's not going to win an end game. I mean, even if it gets a chance to protect, it can foul play and knock out the Whimsicott, but Coridon should be able to close this game. But it's not going to be that assumed. Flare Blitz is going to do a lot of recoil, and uh, those foul plays will start to mount up. It is a Flare Blitz into the Protect. It is the Tailwind. Let's have to see what the Gothitel goes for.
Yeah, I mean, the Gothitelle here just gets to go for the foul play. The Whimsicott is going to get picked up, but uh, you saw how little it was able to do to the Coridon when it did get the switch in. So it should be like six or seven attacks with that foul play when this Coridon is still free to just go for the Flare Blitz. The problem is how much recoil the Flare Blitz is going to it's do. True. Uh, probably just needs to attack twice, should be able to take the recoil plus a Flare Blitz. Uh, the double protect might have made a little bit of difference, but Dachshund does not get it. So now we finally get the answer to our question with this Flare Blitz being a one-hit knockout into the Zashi, and we see what recoil this Coridon is going to take, and it's pretty comfortable. You can take another foul play or two or three from this Gothitelle and just close out the game here. So Colin, really well done. You still go for the foul plays, though, if you can, but I think this Coridon has one job and one job only, and that's to go for another Fire-type attack. The Flame Charge, though, really smart to make sure you're not going to be taking too much recoil. I think the one way to lose that game was to miss a KO with Flare Blitz and do enough recoil that maybe a foul play crit picked up the KO. Now you've got Gothitelle low enough that you can just comfortably Flare Blitz and know that you'll pick up the KO. And it's exactly what Colin does to pick up the KO on Gothitelle, win this game, this match 2-0, and move to 6-0 on the day. 6-0, you're feeling so good. You only need one more now to make your way into day two. And Colin, continuing to show us that Coridon